So the manager comes over and he says, I'm going to call the National Guard, you're going to delete that footage, and they're going to come here and they're going to deal with you. We took a trip to Cancun and scammers there tried to put me in jail. This is how it happened. So we bought our plane tickets to Cancun on Aeromexico's website and after that process of buying the tickets, they offered us a Hertz rental car at a decent price that already included liability insurance. Now I remembered hearing that Hertz had previously been sued in the past for running like a scammy operation in Mexico where they would sell their car rentals for like a dollar a day and then force people into buying their insurance and that resulted in like a 20 million dollar class action settlement but i was thinking you know they're a huge car rental company they've obviously learned their lesson since they've been sued before and i've top tier status and hurt so how bad can it be but then i remembered back to some comments that people had made on the channel like aaron who said I rented a car in Cancun and when I returned it at the end of the week, the first thing they did was open up the trunk, lift up the area where the spare tire should be, and claim we stole it and charged us $300 extra. We tried to fight it and say there was never one in there, we never took one out. And they made us pay for it. By the way, I'll never use Hertz Rentals again for this reason. Or this guy who says that his contract was $151 and then he got charged $889. Or Colby, who said, when taking pictures before taking a rental car, also take a picture of the person giving you the car. I rented a car from Hertz, and the guy that gave me the car gave me one that didn't even belong to Hertz. When I returned the car, they claimed, rightly so, that the car wasn't theirs. They thought I was trying to scan them by taking their Hertz car and returning a junker. Fortunately, I had pictures of the whole thing and was okay. I wouldn't want to be the worker that tried to scam Hertz though. And regarding what happened to Colby in that example, I actually think it was more than just that one employee involved in the scam. Based on all the stories I've heard about Hertz, it seems like it is not uncommon for them to claim that people stole their car. So after remembering these comments, I was thinking, you know, how about I post on my Facebook page asking people if they're still running this same scam. So I posted on there, has anyone rented a car at the Cancun airport recently? And did they give you a hard time when you refused their insurance? I'm renting with Hertz and the rental includes liability insurance. And then I'll be covered from my credit card where I pay for premium rental insurance. And then I also said, all of the rental companies in Cancun used to operate the same way where the car rental would be dirt cheap. I'm talking like one US dollar per day, but then they'd force you to buy their expensive insurance so it might end up costing $30 per day. For doing this, they were hit with a class action suit a little while back and I think they have since changed those practices, but I'm not sure what the process is like these days. After posting that on Facebook, I got so many comments of people telling their horror stories about renting in Cancun. Like Eric, who said he bought the full insurance and he brought the car back. They said it was scratched and tried charging him a thousand US dollars for the scratch despite having the insurance. David said he had a rock hit the windshield while he was renting the car and he brought it back and they tried to force him to pay for a new windshield despite buying the full insurance. And they've been trying to force him to pay for the last three years. So that's two examples of people who actually bought the insurance and still ended up getting screwed over on top of how much that expensive insurance was. But in addition to that, Cham said, the same happened to me with Avis. We ended up not renting the car at all. Even the official car rental places are scammers. And Lexi said, Hertz sucks in Mexico. They screwed me over $500 for a nick in the tire that was already there. They tried giving me the first car with its rim tied on to the tire with a bag. So needless to say, posting that on Facebook didn't instill any confidence in renting from Hertz. So I was going in there with my guard up 100%. So you might be thinking after hearing all this, why didn't I just cancel my reservation and forego the car. Well, I wanted a car there when I was in Cancun and it might have been a decent option to just cancel the reservation. I mean, in hindsight, it would have been a great, it would have been a great idea to cancel the reservation and go with a different company. But I'll, I'll talk about that later. But you know, I, I wanted a car when I was in Cancun. So I was going to go in there and steadfastly refuse 
any extra insurance at all because it already included third-party liability protection and I'm already covered with my Amex Platinum card. Not just the rental coverage that's included in the card, but I also pay an additional fee to American Express for premium rental car protection. So I was going to refuse any insurance and then once I got the car, I was going to thoroughly document everything, take a thorough video of the entire car, including the person giving the car to me, so I would be protected on all bases. And we were flying to Cancun from central Mexico, so we arrived there in the domestic terminal where we went to the Hertz booth. They quickly found our reservation and then Someone accompanied us to the transport van that would then take us over to their main office. And by the way, both the person accompanying us and the van driver wanted a tip for taking us to this place where they would try to scam us. So then we got to the main office of Hertz and it also had the company name Avasa written all over the walls. And I looked that up later and Avasa is a company that has been around for many decades. They're the exclusive operator of Hertz in Mexico and they also operate a few other rental car companies like Thrifty and Dollar to name a couple. So after we walked into the main Hertz office and we're waiting for our turn, the first thing I noticed was that plastered all over the walls in both English and Spanish was information about their insurance. The first point on there said, all additional coverages and insurance that we offer are not mandatory in Mexico. And number two, it says, all rentals include a minimum of third party insurance in case you damage someone else's property. And for Hertz, that's 35,000 US dollars. And I was recently shopping for car insurance for my own car here in Mexico. And surprisingly, that $35,000 for liability insurance is actually quite high compared to a lot of the liability insurance that I was quoted. In. in fact, a lot of the quotes I got for my personal car insurance included liability protection of about 10,000 US dollars instead of 35,000 that's included with the Hertz rental. And it also goes on to state that if you decline their insurance, they will take an additional deposit for any damages that are incurred during the course of your rental. So as we were waiting there for our turn and seeing all these signs around, I was thinking, huh, I wonder if they've changed their practices and aren't running the scam anymore. Or I was also thinking, or maybe they were legally forced to post this because of all their scammy practices in the past. And then I was like, or maybe it's just like, corporate Avasa trying to protect themselves in case they ever get sued again. I didn't know why they were posting our rights up on the wall, but I actually had high hopes that it wasn't going to be the scammy operation that I was expecting. So after it was our turn, the insurance hard sell started immediately. They were like, okay, you're renting a Volkswagen Jetta that is worth 320,000 pesos. They said, if your car gets damaged during the course of your rental, you will be responsible for all of that. That's about 16,000 US dollars. But then they said, if you don't wanna be responsible for any of that, you can pay our insurance of 1,800 pesos per day, and then you'll be covered for 100% of anything that happens. Keep in mind, this 1,800 pesos per day is almost 100 US dollars per day on a lower end car like a Volkswagen Jetta. So to put this in perspective, I have a car here in Mexico that's a little bit more valuable than this Jetta is, and my insurance for an entire year on some of the best coverage I could find was about 600 US dollars. So then he goes on to say, okay, so this 1800 pesos per day, you have zero liability, or, you can pay 1,500 pesos per day, and if something happens to the car, well then you'll only owe us like $3,500, $3,500. Or if you don't wanna pay that much, you can go with our lowest insurance option of 1,200 pesos per day, that's still over 60 US dollars, and then if something happens to the car, you'll owe us 
$7,000. So they gave me these options and I was like, no thanks, I don't want any of those. I'm already covered, it already includes liability protection and I have my own insurance that covers me in case anything happens. So then they're like, well, if you refuse this insurance, you have to do a few things. Number one, you have to sign this paper saying that you agree that you're going to be fully responsible for any damage that occurs during the course of your rental. And number two, you're going to have to leave a 3,000 US dollar deposit on your card. And number three, you're gonna to have to pay 40 US dollars per day to increase your liability protection from 35,000 US dollars to I think it was 250,000 US dollars. So they're like, uh, you can do these three things and you can skip this insurance. It's like $40 per day, are you kidding? And I was like, you know, I'll, I'll do these things but I don't want any of the extra insurance. So after I said, uh, you know, I'll, I'll do that, but no thanks, I don't want any of the extra insurance. They're like, okay, uh, we'll start with the process of the rental contract. Uh, do you have your payment method? So then I hand them my American Express card, the one I have the super duper car rental protection on. And they said, by the way, it's a three or 4% additional fee to use a credit card. So we recommend paying with a debit card. And after five years of living in Mexico, I've never ever seen a major company charge extra for paying with a credit card. This does happen quite a lot at mom and pop shops, but never at major companies. So this is just speculation, but I think they're trying to get you to pay with a debit card because they know how much protection people in the US have if paying with a credit card. Like for example, I told you earlier of that person who was charged an extra $300 for stealing the spare tire that wasn't there. Well, if that happened to me and I was paying with my Amex card, I would tell that to Amex and they'd be like, okay, thanks for letting us know, here's your money back and now we're gonna fight them. That's how it works with most credit cards in the US and I'm sure they know that so when they're trying to scam people, they want you paying with a debit card so you don't have all those extra protections that come with paying with a credit card. So I gave them my card and they first ran it for a 2000 US dollar deposit, which I was a little confused about because a few minutes earlier he had told me it's going to be a $3,000 deposit, but I wasn't going to question a lower deposit. And I went ahead and I signed that paper. I signed that receipt. And this is important for you to know, at the top of that receipt that was for the deposit, it said check-in. Now, if it was a sale, it would probably say something like Venta, V-E-N-T-A. So make sure that it says check-in at the top of your receipt if you're deciding for a deposit. So then he went to run my card for the purchase price of the rental and it came out to almost $500 when it was supposed to be a little over $100. And I was like, wait, what, what, why is it so much? It was like four times the amount it was supposed to be. And he's like, Oh, well, you agreed to this. Uh, it's 40 US dollars per day for that additional liability protection. I was like, no, I did not agree to that. I said, I don't want any additional insurance and I'll pay the deposit and I'll sign your form, but I'm not buying any of your insurance. And he's like, you have to if you want to rent a car here. I'm like, no, I don't. It says right there on the wall, all over the walls in here, that all insurance that you offer is not mandatory in Mexico and that it already includes the liability liability protection. And he's like, no, you have to pay for the insurance. And I said to him, well, you know what? I didn't agree to that. I don't want any extra insurance and I'm not signing that receipt. And he's like, well, if you want to rent a car from us, you have to, you have to buy that insurance. So then I was like, oh, that's how you're going to play it. If you're going to violate my rights, I'm going to let the world know about the scam you're running and I'm putting this on YouTube. So then I took out my camera and I started recording myself telling the story about what was happening about the scam they were running and everything going on there. And then he quickly ran away from his desk and went over to get his manager. So I am here at the Cancun airport right now at Hertz and they are trying to force me to buy the insurance even though I don't actually have to do that. They even have a sign up here that says all insurance is not mandatory. Any other insurance that we 
offer is not mandatory, but they're saying, nope, if you don't pay this $40 a day, and this $40 a day is just to increase my liability protection, uh, but it's already at $35,000 and they're trying to increase it to $250,000, uh, but it's $40 a day. So my total cost of the reservation goes from $100 to over $400 and they're saying if I don't pay this I have to cancel the reservation. I already knew who his boss was because he had been making the rounds earlier and was at our station for a little while but this time when his boss came back he had put a mask on after he learned that I had been recording so I knew from that that it was important for him to not have his face shown. So now I'm about to get to the part where they tried to send me to jail but before I get to that I want to tell you how you can rent a car safely in Cancun without dealing with these dishonest companies and insurance scammers. So you might think, well, obviously I just won't rent from Hertz. I'll just rent from one of the other major companies. Well, that's not going to work for you. Look at Kayak here and you can see the reviews of all of these car rental companies in Cancun and every single one of them gets horrible ratings. They are all running the same scam. I actually used to live in the area of Cancun, so after all of this went down, I contacted my friend who has a lot of connections in the area, and she hooked me up with this company, this small company called Snap Car Rental. It's this guy who's running an honest business without any insurance scams or anything like that, and he came and brought the car to me, dropped it off at my hotel, and it was a very smooth process, so contacting him is one great option. But Snap Car Rental is a very small operation, so if they don't have any cars available, you can also go with the company Avant. Throughout this whole ordeal, Avant has actually been recommended to me a whole bunch of times, so I looked them up, and they get nearly a perfect rating on Google with tons of reviews, so that's a great option as well. I'll link those both down in the description below so you can rent a car safely in Mexico without dealing with any of these scammers. And now back to the story of them trying to send me to jail. So the manager comes over and he says, I don't care if you're a YouTuber. This is federal land and it's a crime to record here. I'm going to call the National Guard. You're going to delete that footage and they're going to come here and they're going to deal with you. We're going to cancel this reservation and we're going to refund your money and you're gonna delete that footage to make sure that me and my employees have our privacy. And then he waves his employee over to the back door and he's like, go get the National Guard. And by the way, if you're not familiar with it, the National Guard in Mexico actually replaced the federal police, the federales, a few years ago. So the federal police are no longer a thing and it's now just the National Guard. So it was at this point that I immediately post on Facebook, letting people know that I'm at Hertz Cancun and they're trying to send me to jail because in case their threats were real, I wanted people to know where I was at, what was going on with me, because I thought that there would probably be something that could help me out in the future if I let people know. And also, in addition to posting on Facebook, I was like, okay, who can I tell about this? And the person I thought of was my friend Trisha from My Trish Advisor because she seems to know everybody in the Cancun area and has all sorts of connections. So I thought if there's one person who needs to know what's going on with me, it's her. So I texted her as well, letting her know what was happening at Hertz. So then they start the process to start issuing the refunds on my card and that employee who was sent off to get the National Guard eventually comes back and then I snap this photo of them because I wanted to have a record of who I was dealing with. The guy on the right in this photo is the manager running the whole scam operation and the guy on the left is the employee who I was dealing with the majority of the time. So they finished processing the refund and then the manager was like, okay, now you're going to show me the footage and you're going to delete everything that you recorded. And I was like, no, I'm not going to show it to you and I'm not deleting shit. And then I motioned to my girlfriend. I was like, Maya, well, let's get out of here. And then he's like, you can't leave. You have to wait for the National Guard to arrive. I was like, no, we're leaving. So as we were walking out of the building, 
I didn't know where we were. I didn't know if we were in a place where we would be able to get any kind of transportation or if we were in a place that was just car rentals and if we wanted to leave, it was gonna to have to be in a rental car. So I was a little bit nervous walking out of the building wondering where we were at, but we walked out of there and across the way I saw one of the terminals and some taxis over there. So I'm like, okay, great. We can walk over there and get a cab from there. So after we got there, I turned around and I snapped this photo of the building we were just in. It has a Vasa written on the outside of it. So you can have an idea of how far away we were. And then from there, we bought an overpriced cab to our hotel and then ended up getting a rental car the next day from uh, Snap Car Rental, which I recommend in the description. By the way, I'm not surprised that these scammers don't want their scam being filmed and revealed to the world. So it's not really a surprise that they're threatening me with the National Guard or whatever else they might threaten someone with on another day. But watch this video next. It's the do's and don'ts of Cancun. There's a lot of really great information in there. And if you're headed to Mexico, you definitely want to check out that video.